Hi there, everyone. Welcome to Bulletproof Mind. In this training program, you'll learn to harness your brain's infinite potential by letting go of negativity and doubt, adopting and spreading positivity, and finding your confidence and purpose in life so you can go after your dreams and live the best life you possibly can. Are you ready? Let's get started. In this first part, we'll look into standing up to and overcoming your inner demons in your head once and for all. The way your mind works has a lot to do with your past. You don't need to have a tragic childhood to have had some trauma. Sometimes a seemingly innocent event can shape you without your even realizing it. Of course, this doesn't happen in all similar situations. There are people who do come out from all of it unaffected. But most of the time, your outlook as an adult is affected if you experienced trauma as a kid. It's a subliminal change that happens so fast you don't even realize it. Think of your mind as a military base, one that puts up barriers to protect itself. Your mind may have put up its own shield to protect you from your traumas. To illustrate this point, maybe your parents got divorced at a young age. You may become less trusting of your partner simply because you want to avoid some ordeal happening to you. You've seen and experienced bad things. It's only natural that you become cautious, putting up your own shields so you don't get hurt anymore. There's only one problem. The shield does not protect you. The shield weighs you down, leading you to believe that you shouldn't take risks or pursue something. This prevents you from realizing your full potential. However, in modern society, there are times where we need to drop our shields and go unarmored. Now it's time to reflect on your own shield. Do you have regrets because you haven't taken the plunge? Why didn't you do it? What could you have done to do it? Is there anything preventing you from doing it? You'll need to think hard as some of these memories have been bottled up. Asking your family about your past can help too. Look at your shield again. Is your subconscious in control of your decisions? If you want to live a good life, you'll need to live one on your own terms and not be dictated by the past. A true bulletproof mind doesn't need protection from the mental bullets life throws at you. A bulletproof mind questions things but doesn't hold you back when you need to dive in and take that risk. And the way to fix this? Your subconscious mind may just be the key. It's hiding secrets you don't know about. You just need to bring the subconscious into the conscious. We'll tell you how in the next part of this program. Previously, we talked about defeating the inner demons from the past. In this part, we'll discuss more about rousing the unconscious behaviors within us. The unconscious mind can be likened to an iceberg. The tip of the iceberg above the surface of the water is your unconscious mind, and below is a mammoth-sized chunk of ice unseen. Due to its mysterious nature, the unconscious mind is still not fully understood but it's part of your mind that you can self-reflect on through conventional means. Besides repressed traumas, there are other things that an unconscious mind can consist of. They include motivations and instincts. You may not know why exactly you grabbed that cookie when you were on a diet, but there is probably an unconscious desire to mess up your diet somewhere in your mind. Habits. Why do you eat food a certain way? These habits may have an unconscious action around them. You may be doing these things due to some trauma that you just can't remember. Automatic responses. Do you say sorry even when it's not your fault? There may be an unconscious reason for that. You don't want the person to get angry at you, and perhaps this is due to an authority figure getting unnecessarily angry at you when you were a child. The unconscious mind has the answers to most of your quirks. Here are a few ways you can delve into your unconscious mind. Meditation is one way. There are a million ways to meditate, and you can probably look up some techniques online that best suit you. The basic understanding of meditation is this. Finding a quiet, comfortable place, sit down, breathe deeply, be aware of your body's functions, and dive deep into your mind. Other ways to access your unconscious mind include bringing up some of your repressed memories. This can be done through therapy or by talking to your family or friends. 
Unconscious memories hold you back. If you want to pursue a goal, but your unconscious mind tells you it can't be done, you're doomed from the start. Now, once you stop yourself from saying no, that doesn't mean that everything you want to pursue will come to you. People will still say no to you. You may end up losing something after taking a risk. Usually, the voice in your head saying no has concerns that stem from a kernel of truth, but having a bulletproof mind means accepting that losing is fine sometimes. The best people in the world failed multiple times before they succeeded. When that particular successful basketball player missed a shot, he didn't think, maybe I should give up basketball, but instead, I wonder how I can shoot better next time. Their resolve overpowered any doubts and made them into the people they are today. These people have bulletproof minds. Every time you face an obstacle, you don't need to cry and think that it's over. Instead, you turn it into positivity. Positive people have the push to go forward, which is what most pessimists lack. By thinking about what holds you back, you'll be able to think about your decisions with a clearer lens and hopefully look at life from a different angle, regardless of whether you win or lose. So, how do you awaken your unconsciousness? Begin by noticing all your quirks. If you can't figure out any, speak to your coworkers, friends, spouse, or family, as they can point out the little quirks you otherwise don't notice yourself. Write them all down and try to figure out why you do it. You may not solve the mystery of your unconscious instantly, but this gives you a clue about how to get started. Every time you perform a subconscious action, put it into a mental note. Do this for something that you want to fix, be it anger or frustration. Try to control that emotion from letting it all out. Take small risks to see small changes in life. Not taking chances is the same as no changes in your life. As we can see, awakening the unconscious mind is crucial so you can address issues that result in negative mindsets or habits that hold you back from living the best life you can. Take these steps and incorporate them into your life and see your life change before your eyes. In this part of the video, let's look into getting back the empathy and kindness lost within you. Now, what is empathy? Empathy is the ability to see through someone else's eyes. You know how the person is feeling, how they see the world, can feel their emotions, and so forth. It's not to be confused with sympathy, which is what you wish on someone who suffers a misfortune. Empathy just feels good to have when you want a rich life. Not only does it feel nice to respect people, but you'll get experiences out of it that help you grow. Being more empathetic can help you let go of your past. By seeing it through the other side, you may feel less hatred for those who you think are your enemies, be it your ex, your boss, your parents, or so on. You can spend your time being positive instead of spending it hating others. Being empathetic can also make you a better leader. For example, if you're a boss, you can empathize with your employees and treat them right. This doesn't mean that you let them walk all over you, but it means that you can improve their morale by not seeing them as another cog. A good leader will motivate their employees while a bad leader will make the good employees flee the company while the others lose all motivation. So with all that in mind, how does one bring out their human side? If you're not a naturally empathetic person, it may be a bit difficult to learn empathy, but not impossible. Think of someone who you haven't talked to. It can be a coworker, someone who rides on the bus, or just your neighbor. Try talking to them, if they're willing to chat. Get into a deep conversation to learn about their struggles and wishes. Also, schedule a get-together with someone whom you don't seem to get along with, and don't jump the gun by making an assumption. Have a deep quality conversation with that person. Question yourself, how did the relationship become so bad? What caused it? Instead of avoiding and ignoring, try to understand what stemmed the relationship's animosity. Avoid getting into a huge argument with whomever you're discussing this with. Things to note, however. As you listen, don't let your biases get in the way. Think about the situation through their point of view and ask what should be done to help. Your beliefs can change because of empathy. Over time, you may find yourself questioning your own principles due to empathy. If you screw someone over for your gain, 
you may feel sorry for them and try to help. Sometimes you have to be a little cutthroat to succeed, but that doesn't mean you have to be cruel or not help out your co-workers. Now go on ahead and reignite that spark of empathy and kindness within you, and you'll be well on your way towards a bulletproof mind. Part and parcel of having a bulletproof mindset is knowing our purpose in life. It can be realistic, like getting a house, or it can be something that seems a bit harder to accomplish, like becoming a millionaire. When it comes to our lives, everyone should have a purpose. Purpose is the motivation that keeps us fighting and going. Without purpose, life becomes meaningless. Now, our purposes in life may seem hard to accomplish. Ignore those feelings. They are just noises that distract you from reaching your purpose. Any purpose that is scientifically possible is possible. And even if you don't reach your goal, the journey can teach you something along the way. Here's a couple of ways to find out how you can identify your purpose and be driven by it. Ask yourself, what would you want to achieve in 5 to 10 years down the line? Take some time to ponder about it. Now, sketch a plan to accomplish your purpose. Do a bit of research. Talk to people who have accomplished your goal. Look at your circumstances and your limits. Then, plan. Set a rough time frame and order. Keep your mind clear and on the big picture when you're pursuing your purposes. Leave all your worries and stresses behind. Have a clear focus on what is ahead of you, but also try to be realistic, too. If your mindset seems to differ from other people, don't be disheartened. Keep going. Sometimes chanting your goals to yourself can get you motivated. Get into a meditative position, focus on your goal, and start chanting. Chant until you feel more motivated than ever. As you are on the go, you can whisper under your breath, especially if something isn't going your way. Your mind needs constant reminders. Write it down and stick it all over. You can also set phone reminders. Get the idea drilled into your head by seeing reminders. Seeing the same thing over and over can brand it into your mind. Even if you feel like your words are white lies, they'll become reality if you repeat them long enough. Making purposes and putting in the effort to accomplish them is one characteristic of a bulletproof mind. Hence, keep planning and striving for success. You're halfway there. Welcome back. In this chapter, we'll discuss the effective ways for you to eliminate the negative energy around you. People with bulletproof minds expel most of the negative energy around them. There are a lot of religious and spiritual names for this energy. Here are a few tips to keeping your negative energy at bay. 1. Begin by working smart, not hard. Very rarely, so rare in fact that it's not even worth noting. Some ordinary person gets everything handed to them through sheer luck. We're not talking about being born into wealth, but someone winning the lottery or stumbling on a bag full of money. For those who went from rags to riches, successful people's stories involve a lot of hard work and effort. For example, if you're building a business, you have to put effort into it. Your name has to get out if you want to attract an audience. Make the business plan and also promote your business as much as possible. Hire the best employees for the job. Make the effort. Even if you don't own a business, you have to work smart and show effort to climb the ladder. Doing it halfway will just keep you stuck in the same old job every day, and that's never fun. If you want to succeed, think about how you can put forth more effort. Are there hours in your day you can spend to be more productive? Apply to more jobs? Think about it, and you can meet your goals. Ignore the negative energy that tells you that you just can't do it. Not all negativity is bad. It's not very nuanced to say that all negative thinking is bad. While a positive outlook can help you reach your goal, and your persistent attitude is the key for winning, our society has been built on negative thoughts. Sometimes healthy skepticism is needed for a healthier mind. You'll sometimes have days where you feel depressed, and that's fine. You're not going to be positive all the time. If you have that mindset, you may give up on a day you feel negative. The goal is to reduce the unnecessary negativity. Ignore the haters, whether it's people or your thoughts. By haters, we mean people who are negative without any reason. They don't provide criticism that makes you grow or think. Instead, 
Use their negative criticism as a drive. When someone says you can't do it, be more motivated to prove them wrong. Negative thoughts have caused people to do great things, too, as long as there is a positive spin. For example, let's look at envy. Envy is considered by the religious to be a deadly sin, yet everyone has it. You see someone who has something you don't, and you want it too. Instead of feeling hate for them and feeling upset, make it a strong drive. How can you get that thing you want? So how do you eliminate negative energy? Sleep well. It's an obvious one, but the key to sleeping is getting the required hours of sleep. For some, this is easier said than done. The stresses of life can keep you up at night. A hectic schedule can lead you to waking up early. By getting the proper amount of sleeping quality hours will drastically improve your decision making and a sharper mind. Begin naturally by having a relaxing sleep, letting go all of your cluttered thoughts and worries. You've done enough during the daytime, you don't need to carry it through with you all night long. Exercise well. Exercising is yet another way to get rid of the negative energy in your body. Lifting weights and kickboxing can help get out anger in you and keep your body strong as you age. It doesn't have to be a tough workout either. Besides keeping us healthy, it keeps our mind occupied by not overthinking things while improving our cardiovascular systems. Speaking of which, working out also contributes to your hormonal balance too. Stop the drugs. We're not talking about never having a beer with a friend or having a glass of wine after work. Instead, we're referring to people who constantly use alcohol as well as other drugs as a form of escapism. Someone with a bulletproof mind knows these things should only be used occasionally, if at all, and keeps a clear mind whenever possible. If you're constantly doing drugs, slowly detox your body from all of that garbage and you'll feel a lot better. Converting the negativity into actions. Write down all the negative emotions you have or the negative words people have said to you. Then scrutinize those words. How many of those words are warranted? How many are just plain nonsensical garbage? Which negative feelings can you flip into something positive? Every time you have a negative thought or hear something negative, add that to the list. Hi there, in this part we'll discuss the key elements of decisiveness which is very much a trait of one with a bulletproof mind. Decisive people attract success. This is the law of attraction at work. No one became successful because they sat around thinking the world was going to fall apart around them. One key element of decisiveness is confidence. By exuding confidence in whatever you do, you'll find yourself more likely to succeed. Even if you fail, you'll learn from your mistakes and imagine yourself succeeding the next time you try. Taking risks is also another key element of decisiveness. However, you can't just recklessly go into anything. Potential risks must be weighted and calculated beforehand. An example would be when asking for a raise. Before you act, think about the best time to do it. If profits are down and the boss is in a sour mood, don't ask. Save the asking for when your boss is in a better mood and not overwhelmed. Have a brighter outlook on the past and then focus on the now. Also, don't focus too much on the future. Overthinking outcomes can cause you to back away from taking a risk. Step out of your comfort zone. You might think that working that boring job every day is fine because, well, you're familiar with it and it gives you financial peace of mind. However, if you're unhappy and stuck doing the same thing for the rest of your life, you'll live your life with nothing but regrets. Also, be positive, but also be realistic. Being optimistic is great, but positive thinking will not make you invincible. Consider possible consequences. Now, let's look into applying the key elements of decisiveness in our lives. Be confident. You can play positive recordings, push out negative thoughts, and be like the little engine that keeps repeating, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. It's hard to change your outlook right away, but by slowly incorporating more positive elements into your life, you can slowly get rid of doubts. Take calculated risks. Perhaps you want to ask someone out. Think about the right time to do it. Don't wait, but don't do it right away either. Strike up a conversation and then figure out the best time to ask. Put yourself on a time frame if you have to in order to give you time 
to build up some courage, but do not procrastinate. Don't listen to people who say it can't be done. Question them back. Why can't it be done? Step out of your comfort zone. If it doesn't work, return back, and at least you know that you have tried. Think and plan about the alternatives. When making a change, think of it as climbing a hill. You're running up to it, sweating and struggling with every step on the ground, and then you reach the top, and the ground is now even. You run on the ground for a while, and then it becomes easy because you are used to it. Someone with a bulletproof mind never stays on the plateau for long. This is the plateau effect. This is widely used and most popular in the fitness scene. Someone does a workout, and at first they see amazing results. Their weight may drop or they may see muscles. But they end up doing the same workout every day and never mix it up. Soon the efforts are less noticeable. The number on the scale doesn't go down as fast or at all. Sometimes it may even go up. Your muscles may end up turning back to fat. This is because your body struggles to get used to something new. But when it finally gets used to it, there is no challenge and the results aren't as good. The idea of beating the plateau effect in the workout scene is to add new workouts to surprise your body or take the workout you have now and make it more challenging than it was before. This is how you improve. Think about how you can take what you have and make it bigger. For instance, if you're getting into fitness, think about how you can lift 10 more pounds, run a mile in less time, eat better, well, the list goes on. The plateau should not exist. As soon as you get good at something, make it more difficult. How can I earn more money? How can I build onto my home? Take a look at your life, and then everything you feel you've hit a plateau at and then think about how you can improve it. But how do you know if you've reached the plateau? Sometimes you may feel comfortable with doing something, and then you may feel challenged by it again. Here are a few questions you need to ask yourself. How to grow beyond your limits. Ask yourself these simple questions. Do I feel like I've done everything I can to make this more challenging? Do I feel bored with what I'm doing? Does my mind or body feel stimulated at all, or do I feel nothing? Do I feel myself deteriorating due to the lack of the challenge? If you answer yes to any of these questions, then you might have reached a plateau, and you'll want to challenge yourself again. You see, humans thrive on stimulation. If their curiosity isn't piqued, if they feel like they aren't being challenged, they suffer. Think of what needs the most improvement in your life. What things have descended into mediocrity and how can you make them more challenging or stimulating? Write them down, especially if you feel bored whenever doing a task. Try doing your workout faster in order to feel more burn. If your art seems stale, try drawing, writing, etc. in a different style than the one you're used to. Mixing up your lifestyle will smash the plateau and, in its rubble, the road to improvement lies. By now, your mind is unstoppable. You're racing towards your goals, and no matter how many bullets come your way, you get past them, and you're not afraid of anything. Your life has improved immensely, and you never hit any plateaus. Instead, you climb mountains that get taller and rockier. Okay, there's one more trap you must not fall in, and that's the trap of selfishness. We did an entire section about empathy. You must listen to other people and learn from their experiences if you want to grow as a person. As you keep reaching your goals, you should not find yourself only doing it for yourself. Think about it. There are tons of people who used to be like you. They're negative, and while they may have purposes, they put no effort into accomplishing them. No time is spent trying to improve on themselves. Their minds succumb instantly when they're faced with a mental bullet. Act like a mentor to these people. Maybe it's your spouse, friend, or co-worker who just can't shake the negative energy off. If you know anyone like this, you can go to them and offer your advice. Show them this book, or at least your version of it. Now then, just like the idea of too much empathy, you need to remember to keep a balance when spreading the concept of a bulletproof mind to other people. You can't just spread it to everyone you see on the street. You'll end up sounding obnoxious to a lot of people. 
Instead, talk to some people around your life who do want to improve themselves but don't know how. These people are sincere with their goals in their hearts, but their mind just isn't cooperating. You used to be like them, so why not reach out and show them this philosophy? Here's a simple guideline to help someone else. Someone comes up to you with their problems. They want to reach a goal, but they're too afraid or don't want to take any risks. You ask them how they've tried to alleviate the problem. Have they tried reaching the goal, or have they sat around hoping the problem will correct itself? If no effort has been tried, teach them about being more confident and decisive. Tell them that even if they fail, it's not the end of the world, and it's a learning experience. If they succeed, teach them more about the ways of the bulletproof mind. You help them once, so they'll be more trusting. If they failed, teach them the philosophy of never giving up. Tell them that successful people all around the world have had to fail dozens of times before they succeeded. Life's just too short to let people suffer. If you're seeing someone who needs your help, listen and then spread your techniques to them. There are some people who just can't learn unless they have someone teaching them. And by asking if they need help, you'll end up doing a deed that they'll never forget. That's another little lesson here we should discuss before we leave. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Some people think that depending on others is a sign of weakness. But if you have people who care about you enough to help you, that's a good thing, right? While you shouldn't take advantage of them and be totally dependent, if they have resources to help you accomplish your goal, don't be afraid to ask.